Okay, uh, welcome back. So, uh, as you remember, uh, in the previous uh, uh, lectures, we were looking at uh, generating function, and then we studied uh, the ordinary generating function. So, we, we said that we can use uh, the ordinary generating function and uh, solve, uh, you know, recurrence relations and, uh, you know, other, uh, other questions about uh, counting. Uh, and now uh, we saw that it was very very useful and uh, and then we look at let us look at one more example and try to solve it uh, using the uh, method that we know right so we let's say that we are given the following uh, recursion formula right so a n is equal to n into a raised to n minus 1 plus uh, let's say 2 n right so it is uh, defined in terms of uh, uh, a n minus 1 and uh, n right so uh, an is defined this way, and uh, n is uh, greater than or equal to one, uh, and a zero is the five is equal to five is the initial condition. Now, uh, as usual, uh, you know when we have such a formula, what we do is uh, we uh, multiply the recurrence relation on both sides by x raised to n, and uh, take the sum. Right. So summation n greater than or equal to one, a n times x raised to n, and what is that? This is equal to x times right because uh, uh, you know we are just shifting uh, to take the uh, degree sum uh, inside summation n greater than equal to 1 n times a n minus 1 which is the uh, coefficient uh, x raised to n minus 1 plus uh, some uh, you know 2 2 x uh, uh, times uh, summation uh, n greater than equal to 1 n into uh, uh, x raised to n minus 1 again taking one x outside now, what does uh, this gives us? So it gives that, let's say that the left hand side is, uh, you know, the first time is missing from a of x, right? If a of x is the generative function for a n, then uh, we have a of x minus phi because a zero is phi, right? Which is the LHS. On the RHS, similarly, we have x uh, times summation n a n minus one x ratio n minus one plus two uh, x by one minus x whole square because summation n x ratio n minus one is uh, uh, 1 by 1 minus x whole square that we already saw. But now the problem is that what do we do with this other term, right? The first time on the uh, RHS. So we have summation n x uh, a n minus 1 x raised to n minus 1 and we don't know how to convert this to convert this to a, a, a nice uh, formula uh, or uh, write in terms of a of x, right? How do you write it in terms of a of x? Uh, because of the n sitting there, uh, we will see that it is uh, it's not uh, easy to do that. So now, why this uh, why did this uh, not work, right? So uh, one can one can show that uh, this uh, really doesn't work. This method uh, does not work uh, to get a, a generative function, a nice generative function, because. Uh, uh, as one can verify that uh, if you look at this uh, a n right this a n uh, is uh, n times a n minus 1 plus 2 n so every time it's multiplied by n right and therefore uh, you will see that uh, this sequence grows uh, faster than n factorial and because uh, of this one can uh, one can show that the uh, ordinary generative function will not uh, will not converge and then therefore we will not get a nice function as we did in the previous case so in that case what we will do right so if that uh, function does not converge uh, we cannot really use the method of generative functions uh, to do nice things right? so in that case we will do some tricks so uh, we are going to learn some uh, thing and uh, one of the most standard uh, way to deal with this kind of thing is to use what is called the exponential generative function. So, what is the exponential generative function? Okay, so given a sequence fn, right? So, a sequence of real numbers, then the formal power series f of x is equal to summation n greater than or equal to zero, fn into x raised to n by n factorial. Okay, is called the exponential generative function of series uh, sequence. So what we have done here is that, see, we know that fn 
uh, is growing, let us say, fast, right? So if fn is growing fast, I want to make the function to be convergent. So to make the function convergent, right, the series to be convergent, what I can do is to, uh, you know, divide throughout by uh, n factorial to make the coefficient of x raised to n to be small. Right? So if the coefficient of x raised to n is small, then one can uh, hope to uh, make it convergent, right? So if I divide all the time, right, all of fn by n factorial, and then take the sum, then I still get a power series, where, uh, you know, because I am, you know, instead of summing fn, I am going to sum fn by n factorial, right? So therefore, uh, it, uh, it, there is a much uh, better probability of conversion. So if fn is growing, uh, you know, uh, large, uh, close to uh, n factorial, one can, uh, one can try to do this and then it might work. So, uh, so basically n factorial acts as a normalizing factor, right, to make uh, fn to be uh, small. Now, how do you recover fn? Well, because we are, you know, smartly using uh, with the uh, xn, I am basically dividing by n factorial. All I need to do is to take the uh, function, whatever we get, look at the coefficient of x raised to n by n factorial in the series x part. That will be equal to fn. So even though n factorial may not be present, right, when we look at the coefficient of x raised to n, we get something, right, but we have to look at the coefficient of x raised to n by n factorial. So if there is no n factorial present in the denominator, we multiply both sides by n factorial and then get the uh, denominator by, uh, to be x raised to n by n factorial. And then we will get, uh, uh, you know, uh, the coefficient of that will be the, precisely the fn that we want. So this is uh, something that we can do. So uh, one can uh, try to use the same uh, method in the previous example and you will see that it will work. So let us look at a slightly different example to begin with. So we have the example fn is equal to 1 for every n. Right? So we take the constant sequence even though it does not grow fast. I am going to just look at this uh, example. Right? So I divide by n factorial everywhere. Right? So I have fn by n factorial, summation x raised to n by n factorial which is, uh, as you know from uh, basic calculus, it is uh, the uh, series expansion for e raised to x, right? And the reason, you know, this division by n factorial and taking the series sum uh, to be called exponential generative function is precisely uh, uh, that the constant series will get the uh, exponential function e raised to x as the, uh, as the generative function, okay? So this, uh, this is the example I wanted to present you first. Now, let us take another example, okay? So, we have, uh, let's say, a0 is 1 and a n plus 1 is defined to be n plus 1 into a n minus n plus 1, okay, for n greater than 0. Find a close formula for uh, fn, uh, 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 close formula for the generative function for uh, the sequence uh, a n. So, uh, one can uh, one can check the ordinary generative function does not work because we have this n plus 1 multiplying every time. So it grows, right? The coefficient uh, grows uh, very fast. So we will uh, try to use the exponential generative function. So a of x is summation a n into x ratio n by n factorial as the exponential generative function for the sequence a n. So what is a n? Which is uh, defined by the recursive formula, right? So a n plus 1 is n plus 1 into a n minus n minus 1. So, take the summation, right, by multiplying with x raised to n plus 1 by uh, n plus 1 factorial on both sides, I will get summation uh, n greater than 0, a n plus 1 into x raised to n plus 1 by n plus 1 factorial, and uh, summation, uh, you know, uh, n greater than 0, a n into x raised to n plus 1 by n factorial, because the, the n plus 1 got cancelled. So, we have actually multiplication. The n plus 1 will be multiplied by, uh, the, you know, divided by n plus 1 factorial. So, I will get n factorial in the denominator. Similarly, uh, for the second time also, n plus 1 ago. So, therefore, I get my summation n minus 1 into x raised to uh, x raised to n plus 1 by uh, n factorial. Okay, now, 
So now uh, we can write uh, the LHS, uh, the first term is missing, therefore it is A of X uh, minus 1, where uh, the first term uh, A0 is 1. And then uh, similarly from the right hand side, you can see that uh, you will get, uh, you take one X outside, it is A and X raised to N by N factorial, which is uh, uh, again, uh, uh, which is again the uh, A of X. So therefore I have X times A of X. And similarly from the last term, you will, you will get, uh, you will get, uh, uh, you will get what, uh, x square uh, into summation x ratio n minus 1 by n minus 1 factorial, right, from this term, uh, and then from uh, the 1 by uh, n factorial, I will get summation x ratio n by n factorial, right. So, summation x ratio n by n factorial with x outside is x into e raised to x. Similarly, uh, the previous term is x square times e raised to x one can verify, I mean, it is the same uh, summation. And uh, the first term is x times a of x. So therefore, all these functions are uh, known to us, right? So now I can write a of x uh, in terms of uh, this function. So I will write a of x is equal to uh, 1 by 1 minus x into uh, this uh, uh, 1 by 1 minus x into 1 plus x e raised to x into 1 minus x. So therefore, 1 minus x cancels out in the second term. So I get 1 by 1 minus x plus x times a ratio. Now each of these I can uh, I can uh, uh, find the coefficient of x ratio in easily. So this is summation x ratio and the series expansion. And the second one is summation x ratio n plus 1 by n factorial. Okay. So coefficient of x ratio n from the first one is uh, n factorial because I have uh, coefficient of x ratio n by n factorial is n factorial here coefficient of x raised to n by n factorial is n factorial and the coefficient of x raised to n by n factorial here is you have to look at the coefficient of x raised to n so th therefore it will be uh, n minus 1 factorial below right but then I have n factorial here so n factorial by n minus 1 factorial will be n remaining so I have n factorial plus n that is the coefficient of x raised to n by n factorial in a of x and which is the uh, the nth term. So the nth term is n factorial plus n, that is the claim. So if you want, you can uh, go back and verify whether it is true for uh, the values. Okay, I will not go into the uh, verification part, you can do it. So this is how we can use exponential generative function to uh, to, to deal with things. So uh, it, is, it is the calculations are exactly the same. Only thing is that instead of looking summation fn x raised to n, we are looking at summation fn x raised to n by n factorial. So another example, summation, uh, I know, an plus 1 is uh, 2 into n plus 1 into an plus n plus 1 factorial n uh, greater than 0 with the initial condition that uh, a0 is 0. Find a formula for n. Now, uh, so what is the solution? So we have uh, a of x is equal to, uh, let's say, uh, summation a n x ratio n by n factorial, where a n is the uh, nth time of this uh, uh, no, uh, the series that we have defined as series. So uh, if you look at the exponential generative function, then uh, you know you can uh, take the C, you know, the uh, recursive formula, right? The recursion relation and then multiply by x raised to n plus 1 by n, uh, n plus 1 factorial on the left side and on the right side you will get uh, as usual the attempts to be uh, uh, exactly uh, as before right uh, 2 into summation a n x raised to n plus 1 by n plus 1 fa n factorial n plus 1 cancels and from the last time uh, n plus 1 factorial itself cancels i will get summation uh, x raised to n plus 1 now, this one is uh, x by 1 minus x because we have just one uh, extra x sitting here. And this one is, uh, if you take one x outside, it's basically a of x. So, it's 2x times a of x. So, a of x and the first term is 0. Therefore, uh, on the LHS, we have a of x itself equal to this. So, therefore, a of x into 1 minus 2x is equal to x by 1 minus x. So, I can divide by uh, 1 minus 2x. So, x by 1 minus x into 1 minus 2x. And uh, one can verify that this is actually equal to 1 by 1 minus 2x minus 1 by 1 minus x. It's easy to uh, do this calculation, right? So I can write it as uh, this. 
and uh, from this uh, I will get summation 2 ratio and x ratio n, and this one I will get summation x ratio n. that is a of x but we want the coefficient of x ratio n by n factorial in a of x so what is the coefficient of x ratio n by n factorial just multiply with the coefficient of x ratio n right? which is therefore n factorial into 2 ratio n minus n factorial into 1 right so therefore I get n factorial into 2 raised to n minus 1 as the uh, coefficient of x ratio n by n factorial, which is a. So I can uh, solve uh, questions uh, using EGF very uh, similar to the one that we did before. Okay, now, uh, you know, uh, you can take it as a homework to solve the first question that we started discussing and then fail, right? Uh, using the ordinary general function. Now try to use it uh, with exponential generation function. And once you have, we can go to uh, look at the uh, meaning of the product. So what is the uh, product of uh, generative function? So how do you define the product? Uh, you know, the product is of course defined uh, in the previous uh, as before, but when it is exponential generative function, how the you know product can be calculated? Right, so we want to see that. So let us look at the uh, product of a of x and b of x, where a of x is summation a and x ratio n by n factorial, and b of x is summation uh, uh, b n into x ratio n by n factorial. So the product a of x into b of x can be defined as follows. Okay, so it is equal to summation n greater than equal to zero. Summation k equal to 0 to n, a k by k factorial into b n minus k by n minus k factorial. And that, that is the coefficient of x raised to n. Uh, so therefore, the coefficient of x raised to n by n factorial is summation n greater than 0, right? And uh, the coefficient of x raised to n by n factorial is just multiply by n factorial on the uh, term uh, that we got. So therefore, I will get summation uh, k equal to 0 to n n factorial divided by k factorial into n minus k factorial okay this is by by converting this x ratio n to x ratio n by n factorial so to do that you have to multiply by an n factorial here right so once i have the n factorial i can take these two together right n factorial by k factorial into n minus k factorial a uh, k into b uh, n minus k, right? And uh, uh, this is equal to summation n greater than 0, summation k equal to 0 to n, n choose k into a k into b n minus k, x ratio n by n factorial, and uh, that is equal to summation c n x ratio n by n factorial, which is c of x, right? So c n is, uh, let us say, defined to be uh, this sum. Okay, so if I define this to be Cn, then I will get this, right? Okay, so if I if I define this uh, thing in the bracket, the yellow bracket as uh, Cn, then I will get uh, Cn into x ratio n by n factorial, which is C of x for some uh, counting sequence Cn, right? Now we have to see what this is, right? So the uh, so so how did this how did this come across? Summation n greater than 0, summation k equal to 0 to n a k by k factorial into b n minus k by n minus k factorial. Now, this is easy to see, right? Because, uh, you know, the coefficient of x raised to n comes from precisely the summation that, you know, you take the uh, coefficient of uh, x raised to n in the, uh, in the kth term and n minus kth term, right? Which is b n minus k by n minus k factorial and then their product and uh, uh, some over all k ranging from 0 to n. I mean, so therefore, this is clearly uh, our usual product of the uh, series, right? So two series we have uh, multiplied and then we get this. We are just writing it in a nice form by converting into this form and we want, because we are looking at the exponential generative function, we want to have this as our, uh, our uh, uh, defining uh, type, right? So coefficient of x ratio n by n factorial is what we want. So therefore, we are converting into that form and then we will get summation uh, n choose k into a k into b n minus k, k ranging from 0 to n. 
Now we want to see how this can make sense so that Cn is well defined, right? Cn uh, is well defined, but uh, what is uh, what is the uh, counting sequence for which object? So what is the combinatorial meaning of the product of exponential and anti functions? So we are describing the meaning as follows. So we have let us say a n of course counts the number of ways to build type a structures and b n is the number of ways to build type b structures one and n element sets. Now suppose a n I mean uh, suppose a of x and b of x are the generating functions exponential generating functions and uh, c n be the number of ways to choose a subset of the t of the set 1 to n. Okay? So we have the set and we want to choose a subset. So you should uh, recall that in the previous uh, case, right, when we are looking at the ordinary generative function, we were not choosing subsets, we were just choosing sub-intervals, right, we, we were not changing the orders, right, we were uh, forced to choose uh, in the particular sequence, 1 to n, if I have the set 1 to n, I have to choose from 1 to, let's say, i, i plus 1 to, let's say, uh, j, j plus 1 to, uh, etc., right. So therefore, uh, uh, there, there is a difference here. We are choosing a subset of 1 to n. So it can be any arbitrary subset. So the number of ways of choosing a subset t and then build a type a structure on this set t. Okay. Now once you do this, then you build a type b structure on the complement of this set. And uh, uh, then, so let me, let me try to put a nice figure. So we will see this later, but uh, this figure may be very uh, instructive uh, to, to see. Okay, so how do I draw this? Okay, so what I want to do is that I want to uh, choose some subset, okay, some subset of uh, this, then I want to put uh, a type uh, A structure of, okay, so I am choosing some subset. And on this set, I am going to put a type A structure on. Okay. Then I take the complement. And on the complement, I am going to put a B type structure. Okay, so given the set of n elements, I choose a subset T, put a structure of type A on the set, then take the complement, and on this set, I put a type B structure. Okay. Now, if Cn is the number of ways of doing this, then the claim is that c of x is a of x times b of x and cn counts the number, I mean, you know, uh, and uh, this function of x ratio n in this product counts the uh, number of ways of doing this. Also. So an is the number of ways to build uh, type a structures on an element set, bn is the number of ways to build uh, type b structures on this, and cn is the number of ways to first partition the set, uh, n element set into two parts, right, like, you know, uh, one subset and its complement. And on the first set, I am going to build a type A structure, and the second part, I am going to put a type B structure. And this uh, is uh, uh, counted by C, and then uh, C of X is equal to A X times B of X. That is the claim. So how do you prove this? Well, uh, if you look at the, you know, the definition, it should be kind of clear because the, what we have here, right, definition of the product, we, you know, what, what does n choose k say, right, n choose k say that I can choose uh, some k element subset of the n element set. So that is the number of ways of choosing the uh, k element subset. Now, once you choose the k element subset, then I have a k ways of putting the type uh, a structure on the k elements, right? So because there is k element, uh, I have exactly a k ways of doing it. So once you choose the subset, I have n choose k ways of choosing this. And once you choose the subset, I have a k uh, ways of uh, 
uh, making the type based structure. And on the once you choose the k element set, its complement is unique. So the n minus k element set, I can put a v structure on v n minus k uh, many ways. Right? So therefore, that is the number of ways of uh, doing this. And uh, and that is what uh, we want, right? So therefore, uh, uh, it makes sense. So here is an example. So a group of, uh, let's say, n students want to form, uh, let's say, three clubs. So A, B, C are the clubs. And each student must uh, be in exactly one of the clubs. The club A must have an even number of members, right? I mean, it could be zero. Nobody can be there also. And the club B must have an odd number of members. Uh, on the other hand, club C says that uh, I don't care whether I have odd numbers or even numbers, but there should be a president, right, for the club. I mean, you know, we want uh, clubs with presidents. So, the, uh, you know, the club C uh, requires that by mandate that there should be a president. Club B says that it should always have an odd number of members. And club A says that it must have an even number of members, even if nobody is there. Now compute, let's say dn, which is the total number of ways to do this. Okay. So, given a set of, let's say, uh, let's set s of people, uh, they can uh, form a club uh, a, right? If uh, if uh, cardinality of s is even, right? So only when uh, cardinality of s is even. Uh, we can form a club and there is precisely one way to do it, you know, they all form a club from that, right? So once you, once you say that these are the guys going to the club, uh, even if, uh, you know, if it is exactly uh, even number of members, they form uh, the club A, right? If uh, cardinality of S is odd, we cannot form a club of type A. So therefore, the generative function for A of X is summation X raised to 2N by Exponential generative function, right? Because x raised to 2n to say that we can only choose an even number of people. n can be 0, therefore uh, n greater than 0. So I can choose 0 guys, 2 guys, 4 guys, etc. And what is this? Uh, I can write it as half of summation n greater than 0, x raised to n by n factorial plus summation n greater than 0 minus 1 ratio n x raised to n by n factorial. This is the way to split this and, 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 and write this. And uh, if you look at this, you will see that this is precisely uh, the generative function uh, for uh, e of x, uh, generative series, and uh, similarly uh, series for e raised to minus x. So therefore, it is half into e raised to x plus e raised to minus x. Right? That is the generative function for i of x. So we get it uh, uh, immediately from this form, right, x raised to 2n by 2n factor. Okay. So, uh, yes. Now, let us solve for b of x. So, b of x is summation x raised to 2n plus 1 by 2n plus 1 factorial. And in a similar way, if you do calculation, you will see that it is actually equal to e raised to x minus e raised to minus x over 2. And uh, C of x is summation, uh, you know, n into x raised to n by n factorial because once you have, uh, you know, n people, you have to choose one of the presidents in n possible ways, right? Any n of them can be a president. So therefore, there is uh, n uh, possible ways to do when you are given uh, a set of n guys. So therefore, uh, I have summation n into x raised to n by n factorial, which I can write as x times e raised to x by taking one x out here, right? And this summation is already known to us. And so we have uh, all these uh, things, right? A of x, B of x, and C of x. And since we uh, are looking at the number of ways of, uh, you know, choosing a club, right? A, a B, and C by partitioning into uh, three parts, we can uh, we can we can do uh, apply the uh, apply the uh, product rule. Right? So uh, d of x is uh, a of x into b of x into c of x and uh, which is uh, e raised to x plus e raised to minus x by 2 
uh, into e raised to x minus e raised to minus x by 2 into x into e raised to x. So we get the Lenz function and then we can look at the coefficient of uh, uh, x raised to n and for that uh, we do some simplifications which are uh, routine so I don't want to go into much detail right. So uh, this product I will uh, write it as e raised to 2x minus e raised to minus 2x by 4 and then you have x into e raised to x and this reduces to right once you take it inside e raised to 3x minus e raised to minus x by 4 and then e raised to 3x I can uh, you know 1 by 4 I can take outside x e raised to 3x I can simplify by 3 raised to n into x raised to n plus 1 by n factorial because 1 x is outside coming from uh, outside and similarly 1 by 4 into minus 1 raised to n x raised to n plus 1 by n, n factorial. So the coefficient of uh, x raised to n by n factorial is n factorial by 4, right, from here. And uh, then 3 raised to uh, n mi minus 1 uh, by n minus 1 factorial minus minus 1 whole raised to n minus 1 by n minus 1 factorial, which is n by 4 into 3 raised to n minus 1 plus minus 1 whole raised to n uh, for n uh, greater than or equal to 1. So this is uh, uh, a nice uh, way to do it.